that through sending letters to uh, our elected officials and going to city council meetings and testifying um, in order to be the voice of business in Montebello. Uh, we have two sponsors today. The first one is uh, Southern California Edison. And the other one is Metropolitan Water District. Bill Pace, the longest chairman is here. And yes, you can mix water and electricity, and it's very safe. <laughs> so now we have, uh, in your program, you'll see that there's a little bio on Robert. Um, Robert is a Midwestern boy, having grown up outside of Cleveland. He was neighbors with Phil. <laughs> Not really, but they say so. Uh, he went to the University of Michigan, saw the error of his ways, and went to the greatest university on the private University of Southern California to get his master's and doctorate. Fight on, that's right. Um, uh, Robert has the unique, uh, being an economist, he has uh, a unique perspective because he has worked in both the for-profit and non-profit world, in academia, uh, and for trade associations. His longest stint was uh, with the Cal State Fullerton, where he taught economics and I heard statistics for 15 years. He loves those regression charts. Um, he has been with uh, the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation for about five months now. Uh, he's still on a probationary period there, so please, please be nice. Please welcome Robert Pymans. Thanks, Albert. Good afternoon. I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch. And so here we are. As usual, the economist speaks just when you're finishing lunch, about to have dessert. Tank up on that coffee so that you can stay awake for my wonderful remarks on what's going on, all right? So it is my pleasure to be here today. So is this, I, did I hear correctly, this is the first annual first day forecast event? So I really am flattered to uh, have been invited to be your kickoff speaker for, for this program. Um, so as Albert pointed out, you know, I've, I've worn a lot of hats over the last few decades, but I've lived here in Southern California since the early 1980s, and uh, by virtue of my, my graduate work, I did really have been doing, uh, doing research and have been a student of the Southern California region since the early 1980s, and uh, I'm very pleased to be in this new role as the Chief Economist for the LEDC because I get to do what I love doing every single day, which is to study the uh, regional economy and to talk about it. Now, the Kaiser Center is just one part of the LAEDC. I think I'd just let you know the other aspects of, of what our organization stands for. It's a 501c3. One of the, the thing we're most known for is talking about the economy, where it's headed, and so on. Uh, but the, it's called the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation because one of the things that we do is try to steer the county uh, in the direction of long-run economic development that is going to be beneficial for business and households and consumers alike. We also have other functions. For example, Barbara Levine is here today, and she is a regional manager for our business assistance program. So if you've got a company, Barbara, there you go. And Barbara, why don't you just tell us for a second. I'll give you a <laughs> that are looking to grow 
and add jobs. Uh, business risk is also business. Gee, I don't know how I can afford to stay in business anymore, or gee, I need to expand if there isn't a space. So these are all areas that we can all come in and listen to the business needs, refer to the right people, and collectively we all work together to maintain the business and help grow the communities. Because remember, the quality of life starts with a good job, and a good job and good jobs make for good, healthy communities. And we're growing it here. So thank you. If I can help you, just contact me. I'm happy to be of service. So now, let's get down to what you really came for, which is to talk about the economy, where things are headed. And um, to that end, I am going to spend a little bit of time talking about the national economy. It's the backdrop that you need to know about as we look at what's happening locally and where things are going to be going uh, over the next, say, 18 months, okay, to the end of 2013. We'll look a little bit at California's economy and some of the other metropolitan areas around the state, but we'll really spend more time talking about L.A., and to uh, some extent about what's happening here in Montebello. So, just to lead off, um, how many of you feel like the recession's over? <laughs> okay, my point exactly. So, even though economists, let me see if I can make this work. Even though economists say that the recession ended not one, not two, but three years ago, it doesn't feel like that. And here's why. You take a look at this graph, this graph shows GDP growth. GDP is like the basic heartbeat of the economy. Normally, we grow at about 3% plus per year. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, so you can see the red dot. I mean, you can see the red bar. Um, and that's where the recession, the Great Recession, took place. GDP fell by 3%. Normally, after the, after the recessions take place, they have taken place, this is going back 40 years, you can see that we have fairly rapid growth in the years following. Three, four, even five percent growth in the years that follow. That has not happened in this cycle. Um, and more specifically, if you look over there at the right-hand side where the green bars are shown, those are quarterly growth rates, and we don't even come close to a three percent growth rate, much less get ahead of that. So we've been stuck at a 2% growth rate for the last couple of years. We expect to repeat that this year. And with that kind of growth rate, it takes forever for the unemployment rates to come down. These are the unemployment rates for the U.S., currently around 8%. For the state of California, around 11%. And Los Angeles County repeat that this year. And with that kind of growth rate, it takes forever for the unemployment rates to come down. These are the unemployment rates for the U.S., currently around 8%. For the state of California, around 11%. And Los Angeles County, 11.6%. But you can see, not only did uh, they reach new highs in this cycle for both the state of California and for Los Angeles, as well as the U.S., they've come down much more slowly in this cycle compared to past cycles. And the challenge here is that we just haven't seen the kind of economic growth in this recovery phase that had been typical of past economic cycles. So take a look at this. This just kind of gives, this is a, this is an economist's dream. <laughs> look at this. Isn't this great? Oh, yeah. Okay. So all you need to know is that the, the starting point in each of these cases is the beginning of a recession. So we all start at the same spot. And these are recessions going back to the 1970s. So as you would expect, when you go into recession, jobs are lost, so you're, you're headed down the, the slope on each of those graphs. And then a couple of them have been identified with little boxes. That's the official end of the recession in each of those cycles. Ours is that the current situation is the very bottom one. So you can see that we fell more steeply. And then after the recession, after that square, you can see that we barely nudged forward. The, the trajectory, the slope, is still rather flat, whereas in past cycles it's been a lot more vertical, and so the recovery had been a lot more, has been a lot more pronounced in past recessions. So that's the problem that we have in this cycle, that we're just not getting the kind of job creation that uh, had been the case in the past. Okay? It's coming along, so don't get me wrong. It's not like we're dead in the water. We've seen job creation take place. We lost 8.4 million jobs during the recession. We've already recovered 3.7 million jobs nationally. 
but it's happening at a slow turn. So the normal unemployment rate for the economy is about 6%. That should be our target. We're currently at about 8%. We've been adding jobs at a rate of just under 200,000 per month. Okay? At that rate, accounting for new people coming into the labor force, so the labor force grows over time. You've got people who are out of work who need to get jobs. At a rate of about 200,000 jobs per month, we're still at least a couple years away from getting the unemployment rate down to 6%. So do keep in, so two years out puts us in 2014, and the recession started in 2007. So a seven-year time span. We've just not had anything like this in our working lifetimes where it's taken so long for the labor market to recover. So the problem, one problem is that the labor market's been slow to recover. Another problem, of course, is that the consumer sector has been badly damaged, if you will, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But those two things together have made for a slow recovery in every sense of the word. Fortunately, so if we, if we take a look at the vital signs of the economy, we take a look at GDP, the basic heartbeat. We take a look at the labor market, which is sort of like the pulse. And then we take a look at blood pressure, which is the inflation rate. Okay? We don't have any problem with blood, for, blood pressure at the present time. Inflation is pretty tame. People are worried. Well, with all this deficit spending at the federal level, is inflation eventually going to be a problem? Maybe, maybe not. It really, and, and with the, what the Fed has done to put so much liquidity into the financial system, the short answer is that liquidity is there, but it's not being tapped, it's not being used, so it's not creating inflation. So you might have concerns about our policies and whether or not they're inflationary, but quite frankly, the, the threat of a much higher inflation over the next couple of years, it is a very, very slim chance of having that, having that happen. So let's not worry about that. Let's worry about the job creation aspect of our economy uh, because that's what we need going forward. So the different segments of the economy are growing at different paces, but most noteworthy is consumer spending growing at 1.9%. Coming out of a recession, we normally see consumer spending ramp up to 4% year-over-year growth, or 5 or 6% year-over-year growth. And again, that's not happening, partly because of what's been going on in the labor market. But on top of that, households who were homeowners have seen their equity, uh, lost equity in their homes. Some, many people have lost their homes. Investors in the stock market also saw huge losses, although a good part of that's been recovered. But these kinds of changes behind the scenes, along with the fact that credit's been tight for consumers and businesses alike uh, for, for several years, all of that has made for a, a tough road for the consumer sector. Consumer sector is two-thirds of the economy. There's really no other segment of the economy that can move us forward in a pronounced way to get us from a 2% growth trajectory, which is where we are right now, to maybe a 3 or 4% growth trajectory. So until we get to higher growth, which really has to come from the consumer sector, I hate to say it, excuse me, but we're kind of stuck at 2% growth. I'll take growth, don't get me wrong. It's just it, we need faster growth to, uh, to recover in a much more timely fashion. Now, California's economy moves pretty closely in lockstep with the national economy. This shows a similar uh, depiction of job growth in the state of California uh, to what we had seen just a few minutes ago with the U.S. As you can uh, see here, we're, we're moving in fits and starts. Some job creation took place early last year, and then as the uh, improvement in the economy kind of gave way to uh, a much more sluggish situation, we just didn't see the kind of, see the kind of job creation here in, in California that we needed. Uh, even with the 4,000 job loss that we see here for the month of April, we've been averaging about 20,000 jobs gained per month for the last few months. So we're headed in the right direction. But once again, we're moving a little bit slowly uh, for comfort. Fortunately or unfortunately, the um, areas of California that are seeing growth are not here in Southern California. You see Stockton and going down a little further the list, Bakersfield, you've got commodities, that is to say agriculture as well as energy, that have helped those economies with job growth. The, the tech boom that is currently underway and has been for several years has boosted uh, job creation in San Jose and San Francisco. Uh, Orange County, uh, which tends to fare somewhat better during recessions than LA County and comes out more, more quickly, 
is doing exactly that. So it's got a, a 1.8 percent year-over-year job growth rate here uh, for uh, for the month of April. And then we have to look down to Los Angeles County, seven tenths of one percent job growth. So it's it, we're barely getting our head above water with respect to job creation, and that's been true for well over a year. We've been right around that half percent growth mark for quite some time. So that, in part, explains why the unemployment rate's been so slow uh, to come down in, in Los Angeles County. Spent a little bit of time talking about the housing market for the state, and uh, we'll get to talk about LA County as well. Um, the worst of the housing market in terms of home sales happened back in 2007. That's when home sales plunged, as you can see over on the left-hand side. Um, Sales in the neighborhood of 500,000 to 550,000 should be considered normal for the state as a whole. So we've been a little bit shy of that 500,000 the lower bound of that threshold for the last couple of years. But it's not like the housing market's dead in the water. It is doing its job. Okay? And we've got a lot of foreclosure to, that we have to work through still. But even that's improving. And, and despite what you hear in the news, we're actually way ahead of many other states that have problems with with large numbers of foreclosures. Over here on the right side, the monthly numbers tell us that that yellow uh, squiggle tells us that we're a little bit ahead of last year's home sales for the period from January through April. And as far as home prices are concerned, you can see on the far, far right-hand side that the last green bar finally nudged itself above the 300,000 mark for the first time uh, in over a year. So the, there are signs that the housing market across the state is showing improvement. But I have to be honest with you, these state numbers heavily reflect what's happening in the Bay Area. The Bay Area is seeing, as you might ex expect, with good job growth, decent job growth, they're, they're seeing a lot more buoyancy in home prices. That's what's really helping the statewide market. But you've, you've heard so much about foreclosures, and, um, and you know the question is what to do about foreclosures. Right now, I would say that the state is working its way through this foreclosure problem about as well as can be expected. It's doing better probably than so many of the other states that it's lumped together with, like Arizona and Florida and Nevada. This shows the number of properties um, on the right-hand side for April. The number of properties uh, in red that have become bank-owned, that are bank-owned properties, 82,000. Two years ago, it was more like 140,000. Okay? So the, the inventory of bank-owned properties is quite a bit lower. 80,000 properties in a housing market that de deals about 500,000 per year. It's, it's a number that the housing market can digest in a reasonable amount of time. Um, unfortunately, the green, bar tells us, the green bar tells us about properties that are now going into foreclosure, also about 80,000 properties. And what, without looking at this, it tells us that it takes about 18 months for a property to go from starting a foreclosure process to coming out of the other end of the foreclosure pipeline as a, as a bank of property that's resold. So if you've got 80,000 properties today in, in May that are in some stage of foreclosure, it's going to be 18 months. So that's the end of 2013 by the time those properties make their way to the market and are finally sold. So the problem is not going away anytime soon, but the numbers are diminishing. They're less of a, uh, a smaller and smaller percentage of the total market pie, and so that's a good thing. So we're probably uh, set up this year for some positive news in terms of home prices this year, at least showing some modest year-over-year uh, -year gains, which ought to be good to, to shore up the, the market as a whole. As far as LA County is concerned, We've seen things turn around at the top, you can see. Now this, this takes a look at the first four months of this year and compares against the first four months of last year. And so we're up eight tenths of 1%, so a little less than 1% in terms of job gains. We've added 29,500 jobs on a monthly basis so far, so that's good. Um, that's an average. We're seeing the ma major gains take place, excuse me, in private education. So mostly in higher education institutions. So it's not state schools, right? It's, it's USC and other private schools that are adding to their ranks, both teaching ranks and other staff. Construction is showing some gains. Administrative and support services 
really reflects increases in temporary health. And then you've got professional, scientific, and technical services, leisure and hospitality. As you'll see in a few minutes, our um, leisure and hospitality has been doing pretty well. Retail trade is improving somewhat, <coughs> excuse me, and that's good because it's a reflection of what's happening with the consumer segment of the economy. They're doing better, a little bit better. So you can see that we're, we've turned the corner. We've got many more green bars, as you can see, than uh, red bars. Government is still suffering with job losses, and manufacturing is also seeing uh, some job losses as well. Um, that showed it in percentage terms. This just shows the absolute numbers. So we've added 9,200 jobs in education, and so on down the line. I kind of have that more for your reference than to spend any time talking about it. So let's look at the major segments of the economy here in Los Angeles County. The entertainment segment is by far the largest. Uh, it's, it accounts for about 160,000 jobs out of a base of about 3.8 million. Okay, so 160,000 is a large number. Then when you stack it up against the entire uh, employment for the entire state, it, it's not quite so large. But here you've got motion picture and sound recording jobs. Uh, holding steady at 125,500. Last year was a very strong year for this particular industry. And then, again, I can't really point it out, or I'm not seeing it. Yes. Right there. We, early this year, we took a hit. And now we've seen uh, the job numbers come back some. So that's a good sign. The next largest uh, area of our economy here in LA County has to do with international trade. So this just show, shows port activity. Um, and at the very bottom, it tells you the net change on a year-to-date basis. So we're, we're seeing containers coming through the two ports up by a little bit less than 1% on a year-to-date basis, nine-tenths of 1%. So um, the big plunge that took place during the recession is shown right here, the loss of container activity. We saw a big comeback in 2010. Uh, we're about even in 2011 compared to 2010. This year and next, we expect to see some small single-digit improvement in uh, <laughs> port activity. Uh, so again, we're headed in the right direction. It's just that it's a slow turn. Now, if you've been around the LA area for a couple decades or more, you'll remember that aerospace accounted for somewhere in the neighborhood of 175 to 200,000 jobs in back in the day. Okay, that's changed quite a bit. This is just one segment of the aerospace and related portion of our economy. It accounts for about half of the jobs that we have in the economy today that are aerospace related. And you see, you see that the um, the numbers took a slide over the during the recession, but we've seen some uh, some comeback in those numbers these last few months. So. That's good because it's not just an important sector, but these are high paying jobs. We don't want to see these high paying jobs go away. So one of our concerns at the LADC, and I'm sure with many communities around Los Angeles County and all of Southern California, is that with the anticipated cutbacks in defense, there will be some programs that are either going to be cut back or, or eliminated altogether. And so that's going to translate into real job losses in this very important sector. So we have to pay close attention to developments in that area. Next, you've got um, travel and entertainment. So here you've got hotel occupancy rates, and it's very seasonal, so you can see the sawtooth sort of look here with the weakest time of the year in December. So we've seen improvement in uh, occupancy rates with March 79.3%, up quite a bit from back in uh, December of last year, which was around 65%. So we're headed in the right direction with this particular uh, segment of the economy. Spend a moment on, on housing. Well, okay, so on the left side, you've got home sales on an annual basis. One has to ask, well, when are we going to get back to sales such as we had seen during those record-setting years back in the mid-2000s? Don't even ask that question, because <laughs> those sales were, were fueled in part by poor loan practices. Okay, so um, we probably could count on sales on a sustained basis in, in Los Angeles County happening in the, in the neighborhood of 40000 per year, somewhat lower than what we had during those boom years. And we're right around there at the present time. 
Over on the right-hand side, you can see how the blue line, which is this month, this year's uh, monthly sales, happen to be tracking against last year, so we're about even with last year. So we should, at the end of this year, we ought to look at look back and be able to say, geez, at least home sales held up relative to last year. That's a good thing. Home prices, however, are still tracking behind last year's levels. Uh, again, this blue line, which uh, shows you the first four months of this year, is, is clearly below the entire year for 2011. But I do think that we're probably going to break out over the next couple of months, and in all likelihood we'll see some improvement in uh, the median price as we get further into the busy season. March really marks the, uh, the kickoff of the busy season, but you really see a lot of activity pick up in May, June, through, uh, through August. So I would expect in turn that home prices are going to respond during that period of time. Now that's existing home sales. New home sales are going to take a long time to come back. You can see back during the boom years the kinds of sales, I'm sorry, permit levels that we had uh, running in, in Los Angeles County. And then you can see how far things plunged in 2009. We're making a slow comeback here. Um, and, and you'll be, if you hear what's going on in the uh, recorded in the news, big percentage increases, but big percentage increases off of a very, very low base. It's going to be years before new home building comes back uh, in, uh, to the degree that it was uh, a presence back in the middle of the last decade or in previous decades. This is the worst downturn for the, for the new home segment of the market since the 1950s. We don't have a lot of information on Montebello, but we were able to um, uh, at least obtain uh, some trend in terms of employment. So the blue bars represent employment trends. Similar to so many of the other uh, geographic entities, LA, uh, I've got some information on San Gabriel Valley because we, we study that particular region of the economy. You saw a pretty pronounced dip in uh, job numbers for the year 2009. And an ever so slight comeback, it's barely perceptible in 2010 and 2011. The unemployment rate climbing sharply through the recession, but finally heading south there in 2011. So we're headed in the right direction. It's not a whole, the overall job numbers are not a whole lot different in terms of the trend. Uh, compared to the San Gabriel Valley, which I've been told Montebello is not a part of. So I, I understand that. This is just my best near geographic point of reference so that you can see that the, the city of Montebello is tracking pretty closely with other regions in, in all of Los Angeles County. Um, the, the, during the recession, you know, every, just about every segment of the economy lost jobs. That's what this represents. Uh, the one exception, typically, any, with any ge geography that you look at, we saw gains in health care. Jobs added in health care, even through the recession, nationally, statewide, and locally. Okay? But things are now different. This is going from 2010 to 2011. We, see, we have seen job gains in just about every segment of the, of the local economy in the San Gabriel Valley. And um, you know, as we go forward this year and into next year, we only have a couple of red bars left back there. If you saw in this last picture of job losses, even those are going to turn around, and we're going to see gains pretty much across the board over the next couple of years. Uh, some people are worried about a, a double dip recession. It just doesn't seem to be in the cards. More likely in the cards is that we're just going to kind of slog along at the national level with two percent growth. The situation in Europe, the Greek debt crisis, uh, the fact that a couple of economies there are already in recession, that's going to slow growth, maybe knock a few fractions of a percent off of our growth rate. The situation in China, where their economy is still growing, but instead of growing by double-digit rates, it's growing by high single-digit rates, also means that our economy at the national level is going to grow a little bit more slowly, but just lobbing a few fractions of a point off of the growth rate. It's not like it's going to turn us into a recession. Uh, if there is one area that we need to be very mindful, especially the, given the financial crisis that accompanied the um, economic downturn during the Great Recession, we have to be pretty mindful of what happens with the financial sector in Europe. Because with Greece potentially exiting the, uh, from the Euro, um, and
and whatever that might do to the financial situation in Europe, uh, there's a fairly significant exposure in the United States of financial assets uh, like lending and so on from Europe to the United States, in the neighborhood of 10% of GDP here in the United States. So if they start to have financial problems there and have to call in loans, that can have a dampening effect on our national economy. And of course, that would eventually ripple its way down to the local level. So all in all, you know, we, we do see the economy continuing to move forward. It's just at such a paltry pace, it's a little hard to get excited. Um, I wish I could say that things are going to be great, and that by the end of this year, you're going to look back and you're going to say, geez, we finally turned the corner. What I can say is we already turned the corner, just didn't, you didn't notice. Um, and you're moving so slowly, you feel like you're right behind your grandmother. It's just a very slow twerk, um, with all due respect to the grandmothers of the world. <laughs> and uh, so you can see our, our outlook for the unemployment rates, improving but slowly, personal income gains, small uh, but positive. These are all things that, are, that tell us that we're headed in the right direction. The, the labor market is, is on the mend here in Los Angeles County, but ever so slowly. Look at um, where we were with peak jobs back during the boom in excess of 4.1 million jobs, currently um, about 3.85 million jobs, and we still have a ways to go. It's going to be a couple of years before we get back to those peak levels of jobs. A couple of years, I should say. That, that's actually optimistic. Four or five years. So this is the challenge that we have in Los Angeles County. Um, Orange County is probably going to recover more quickly. They've already, out, uh, they've already beaten our forecast for the unemployment rate, our forecast for unemployment in Orange County for this year is about 8.2%, and their most recent report was 7.4%. So they're um, improving, and that's got to help the other economies around the region. And the Inland Empire is also outperforming in terms of job creation and in terms of its unemployment rate coming down. So uh, we just we need to uh, see the, the pace of activity in, in Los Angeles County pick up a bit so we can catch up with these other guys. Now. So I think the bottom line is that you should walk away saying, yeah, the economy is moving in the right direction. Uh, for the next 18 months, we expect to see growth, a little slower than we would like. But at least that enables us to feel like we don't necessarily need to hang onto our chair and wait for the next crisis to happen. It's unlikely that we're going to see another major crisis. Uh, we can plan, hopefully, for the next 15, 18 months. But you also have to think long term. And these are some real problems that, that we as a community have to cope with. You know, our public infrastructure, roads, uh, so many other aspects of our infrastructure need a lot of help. Uh, we have cut K through 12 and higher education steeply at the public level, making it very difficult for people to achieve their career, I mean their education aspirations. And we are in danger of perhaps losing a whole generation. And, and what do we need most to grow this economy in the 21st century? We need educated workers who can take up those jobs in tech and in other areas. So we, we definitely have to pay attention to getting that back on its feet, that segment of the economy back on its feet going forward. Water is always an issue that comes up. Um, I, I've done a little bit of uh, research recently, and, and gee whiz, and I'm sure you know this if you've lived for any length of time in California, this is a perennial problem. Um, the water's up there, but all the population's, not all, but 60% of the population is down here. And the people up there don't like the fact that we, we get the water down here. Okay, so, and yet we all need to live together in this state and figure out a way to address these problems. So I know that the voters are going to have an opportunity to vote on that. Uh, there's a there's a measure coming up. When is that? Is it yeah. So uh, and and more generally, the natural resources in this state are uh, things that we have to uh, tend very carefully to. And land use issues. We uh, talk in our office about um, industrial and warehouse space being taken out of. Uh, out of that use and put to residential use. So, and there are a lot of employers who would like to locate in Los Angeles County, but they cannot because they can't get the space that they need. These are all challenges that uh, we have to face in the long run as a group. And uh, I 
just, I just don't want you to leave thinking, well, yeah, the economy is moving in the right direction. I wouldn't say all is well, but at least it's improving. Yeah, that's true, but we still have a, a number of things that we need to tackle together um, on the long-term view of things. So, uh, just on a closing note, we have events at the LADC. The economic outlook takes place in February of each year, and then we have a forecast event in July, July 25th, uh, in downtown LA. So you're uh, certainly invited to join us for our mid-year forecast update at that point in time. Uh, but all in all, I think you know we, we we need to just keep our noses to the grindstone. We're not out of this yet. You know it as well as I do. I just happen to be the messenger. So. Go help my forecast and spend some money. <laughs> Thanks for <everybody. laughs>